Welcome back to What Are T Noobs for General Disturbance. This is an AMX 13 F3 AM Statistics French SPG. It's located on the attack team on Ghost Town Assault and it's under the command of Randomac of Tog S. Game on. Well, it's a 10 minute battle and we're moving away from the firing position. I sounded for a second like we were using rockets. Actually, this is the stock gun on the AMX 13 F3. It's capable of doing 600 alpha and penetrating 48 millimeters of armor with a four meters burst radius. Slightly lighter than the top gun, but it's got about the same figures. Okay, well, he's aiming towards the enemy and the first enemy that comes in sight is a VK-3002D. Now, something unusual happens in this game, something you don't normally expect. Whoa, he fired around in there, but unfortunately, the enemy target had been destroyed before he could get to do any damage. Well, what is unusual, and you'll get to see it virtually straight away with his first, or his second shot, I should say, is that he actually earns 100% of his damage from blind fire. Okay, he thinks there's somebody behind that bush. Last tank that was seen, there was a VK-3002D. It's indicated on the minimap, and that's where an enemy tank should be if he was trying to prevent our tanks coming down from the hill. We've got a super Hellcat up there now. He's marked the spot, he's fired around in, and he gets a direct hit with his first shot. He was correct, there was somebody there behind that bush. There might be somebody behind the other bush as well. So his first shot, he doesn't know how much damage he's done, but we'll probably find out towards the end of the game. Now, it's only a quick game because the team is very, very good. The rest of his team. So he's firing another one in. This time round, there's nothing there to take the shot. So it looks like the enemy tank. Oh, he has pulled back. In fact, he's missing a huge chunk of his hit points. Suddenly been spotted. Okay, aiming towards the town, we can see a few enemy tanks there, but they're not within sight of us at the moment, but he can fire around in just to splash them. It actually lands behind them, so he doesn't get anything from that shot whatsoever. Oh, but that tank went down very quickly. That was an ISM, I think, getting absolutely nuked by a BC-176. You can see enemy RT firing in the background. Just beyond the second ship, or the one that's closest to us. Our guys are moving in, and with a BZ at the front, yes, they're nuking these ship, these enemy tanks, nuking these ships, nuking these enemy tanks as they go. Well, that guy's very well stunned, and he's decided to hold up on that corner but it probably won't work out so well for him. Six of the enemy have already been killed, so we're five up on the enemy. But remember, this is a, an assault game, so it has to be over fairly quick. Fires blind. Shell lands right at the foot of the steps. And in fact, that's where the Progetto was, so he might have taken some damage from that shot. We just don't know at the moment. We'll find out towards the end. It's amazing what you can do, even if you can't see the enemy. In fact, we're capping at this moment, and it looks like the enemy's not putting up a very good game. Again, another shell goes in to try and hit that uh, Progetto. And we're almost about to cap out and win, unless the enemy gets a reset, and they have got a reset. Their SU-130 PM has risked life and limb to get in amongst our guys, but he probably won't last very long in there. Okay, we fired another round in, and the Progetto went unspotted just as we fired. There he is again, but he's missing a huge chunk, and I don't think he's going to last very long. He has managed to get a reset on our cap, but he's missing so many hit points now, and he's gone down. He's been taken out. So we're looking around for more targets to fire at, and look, we've got a couple here. 
yeah, Sonero V39 and a Nashorn. And they were spooning each other. If you're a child and you wonder what spooning is, ask your parents to tell you. Um, <laughs> that's going to be an interesting discussion. It's a tier 8 game with tier 6 tanks in it. And we just saw a Borsig. He's dialing in and he's finishing off the load. Oh, I do wonder what's going to happen with those discussion. Hmm. Rounds out. Oh, and before the shell arrives, the Borsig is out. There are only three enemies left. Two of the Marathi. There's the only tank. It's the SU-12244. We're dialing in, but I don't think there's very much longer left to live on this game. Because there's only three enemies left. Okay. Rounds out. And he gets killed just as we fire. And in fact, our round actually hits our Strib S1. But that's it. The game's over. And he didn't hit a single tank to actually do damage whilst they were spotted. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the third class tank of a random act of Tog S in the AMX 13 F3. He managed to get uh, damage on the ARL V39. I think that was after it was spotted. He actually penetrated the guy for 421 hit points and actually took him out of the battle. Uh, that was after he was spotted and the Nashorn was killed, but he then went unspotted and got the kill. He actually damaged the VK-3002D. He was actually hiding in that bush at the time. That was a direct hit. Didn't penetrate, but it did 255 hit points of damage. And yes, he did damage the Progetto 46 with Splash, but not so much as he thought. Only 70 hit points of Splash, probably because the shell exploded on the steps in front of him. But his win rate in that game was 1,167, which shows that it was good but not special. He didn't actually hit any tanks directly, uh, except, of course, the V-39, but every tank he did hit, he didn't see them. He actually got blind damage. If we look at team score, you can see the highest damage in the game actually went to the BZ-176, predictably, as no P tank. He got a high caliber and steel wall for 3,932 hit points. Second highest damage went to the Barass for 3,020 Third highest damage went to the Progetto he hit, 2,858 hit points. And we can see the SU-130PM there in fourth place on damage actually did manage to get a defender, resetting the cap, but he didn't survive from doing it. We can see that Randomac got 746 hit points from blind shots. Uh, when it comes to kills, though, he actually did get a kill, but the high score was the BZ-176, five kills to him. Two kills went to the Barask and the M2Y on his own team. And the Borsig on the enemy team. And in fact, the Borsig was the only one on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. And only three tanks on the enemy team actually got kills at all. When it came to base XP, you can see he's way down the table with 481. That's still better than everyone on the enemy team. The high score was the BZ-176 again. 1,425 base experience points to him. Brass got 990. The M4A1 FL10 got 784. He fired only 11 rounds in that game. He only got two direct hits on the enemy and one penetrating shot. The two direct hits, of course, were the V-39 and the VK-302D that he actually he penetrated. Well, he penetrated, didn't penetrate him. He actually hit him in the bush. Um, five splashes during that game as well. 746 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage three of the enemy, get, got one kill. And he earned 16,373 credits on a free-to-play account. And he also took away 2,886 experience points out of this game, including a bonus for completing a mission of 1,924. So all in all, that was pretty impressive because the game didn't last very long. It was only 5 minutes 49 seconds, but every bit of damage he did during that game was blind damage based on the minimap, based on what had previously been sighted but gone unspotted. And then he did damage and uh, managed to earn a fair bit off that. So that's an impressive first game in the AMX 13 F3, but it's not the only game we're featuring in this video. We've got another replay for you, and let's have a look at that one right now. In the second replay, we've got AP Gibbo of Philo, 
and he's on the North Spawn of Steps. Game on. Tier 6 game with Tier 5 tanks in it. Both our Arties are Tier 6s, which is good. Means the enemy have got the AMX 13 F3 and the M44 as their Artie. Okay. We're going to go up this corner. Going high in an RT can be a bit of a problem because if you do get spotted, uh, you're going to be shot at from the distance. But he's actually positioning himself quite nicely here because he's behind cover, except he's very close to the bush. Okay, he's ready to shoot. As you can see, AP Gebo has got the top gun, so he is firing uh, the full force. In fact, he's actually decided to load the non stun AP with 770 alpha. 49 millimeters of pin, 4 meters on the burst radius. First target, T34 85. Guys backing up a bit. Okay, Panzer Fear Alcerol H. And back in the distance, we can see a DSPZ, which of course is tier 5 and isn't going to react well if it gets hit by one of these rounds. In fact, it could wipe him out completely. Well, he did get hit, but it didn't wipe him out. It looks to me like it might have hit the tracks on the rear of the vehicle. But I don't think he'll have many hit points left after that shot. Okay. Standard reload, 30.58 seconds. And he's got 25.34, so he's not five seconds off the time. Okay, KV-2 on the move. Well, a little too close. No, he's when you back up against the wall like that, you actually lower the the howitzer, which actually means you've got less elevation and you can't easily get shots on the enemy. Okay, that looks a good target, the VK. Direct hit, 299. Well, for a second, we just saw the DSP's head. Okay, we're loaded. He stopped. Rounds out. Close, but no scar on that one. Again, he's backed up against the wall. They're getting closer and closer, which means he probably will have to move. And he's loaded. Rounds out. Kill shot. Okay, that's his first kill of the game. The team are three up on the enemy at the moment. Oh, that uh, Panzerfear is moving closer and closer to us. And he just got a kill. He just took out our M10 RBFM. Oh, they changed course just at the wrong moment for us. Is he still heading in our direction? It looked like he was coming directly for the cap. I think he's making the wise choice to get out of here. This RT will do 60 kilometers now. And yes, there was a, a shot from the Panzer Fear. We did get spotted. Now he's deciding, can he go into the spot? Yeah, he can move and he's going to try and get as far south as he can. Would be a good idea to tell the SU-8 as well to move. Oh! Well, no, no, not necessary anymore. The SU-8 just wiped him out. Okay. Well, we know there's a number of enemy tanks around that side. 
The DSPZ, by the way, he got badly hit. He is out of the game, so somebody else killed him afterwards. KB2 making a move. Not fully dialed in yet, but ready. Oh! Perfect! That landed near the engine deck, I think. But he's out of the game, and that's the second kill. The RL44 managed to sneak in by the back door, and the Cromwell looks like he's trying to do the same. Okay, the SU-8 just stunned him. So if we can get a round out, that will help our SU-8 by giving him stun assist. 340 stun assist at that. He'll be very happy about that. Okay, might be nice if we could take the Cromwell down. The air has gone. Our CDT's um, hunting the Cromwell. We're only seconds away from shooting, but the Cromwell, well, he's not being cooperative. Rounds out. Now he is. That's a kill. Four enemies left, including the, one of their arties. They lost the M44. We think they're along the back of the map. Now, we could drive closer, but, well, we just spotted a 60G FT. So, let's see if we can put him out of commission. Well, he just got hit by the SU-8. Rounds out. Well, this is a good, a good team combo here because both parties are working together, which means the SU-8 is going to benefit from all this damage assist. Okay, looking up into the heights at the back. Can't see any tracer, which might mean that the other enemy RT is right over in the corner of the map down in grid square K0. I think that might be likely. We're not seeing any traces come from this area. Platoon created. And we platooned with the SU-8. If the SU-8 gets another kill, there's a brother in arms, a brother in arms for us. I was almost said brother in alarms there. Just can't see anybody. Oh, there he is! An M10! Um, I think we were a little asleep at the wheel there. <laughs> okay, can he get a hit? Line it up. Rounds out. Oh, that was good. He got splashed there for 73 and the M10's gone. There's only two enemy remaining. They must be over in the corner. And their M10 just killed our KV-1. There he is. Down in the dip. Okay, we're almost loaded. One round of non-stun HE left. Ready. Round south. And... Oh, what happened there? Was our RT facing the wrong way? I think it was. I think when we fired that round, we didn't have a rescue on the target. And we didn't hit it. So I think our shell went off in a different direction. Well, we're loaded this time. But I think the enemy is over in this corner. I don't know what happened. If he, if he turned, accidentally hit the wrong key or whatever. In fact, yes, he was. He's just around the corner. He's just shotgunned our AEC. So we fired one back. And that was very close to where the AMX was, but he's moved. And he will die this time. He's not going to get away from the T-34-85. And that's game over. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the second class tanker for AP Gibbo Afino in the AMX 13 F3. He managed to get fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four exactly. He also managed to get a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits in that game. He got eight, and he got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. So it did pay off using the non stun HE, although he didn't get an ace tanker, but he did get the high damage. 4,760 was the win 8 from that one, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. The high damage was 2,189 hit points, and that went to AP Gibbo. 
Second highest damage went to the M10 RBFM on the enemy team, 1,764. And the third highest damage went to the RL44 on the enemy team with 1,548. We can see that uh, the fellow RT on our team got 922 hit points. So he wasn't doing so much damage, but he was doing stun assist. And we can see that he got 812 stun assist of 10 stuns. Go back to the details. We can see the highest number of kills was also AP Gibbos. He got four. Three kills went to the M10 RBFM on the enemy team. Two kills went to the Type 58, the SU8, the BDR G1B, the AC. And on the enemy team, their AROL 44 and 60 GFT both got two kills. When it came to base XP, well, he's got that one too. So it means he's got a clean sweep. He's got the top in all three columns. 817 went to AP Gibbo. 746 went to the, I think that's an M4A376 went. And 710 went to the SU8 in that game. Actually, no, that must be the CDT because we did see a CDT in that game and they haven't modeled that yet in the source of uh, data. Okay, so we go to the details. He fired 13 rounds, six direct hits on the enemy, no penetrations, but he did get 11 splash. Damage of 2,189 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage seven of the enemy, killed four of them, and did 471 hit points of damage assistance in the game. On a free-to-play account, he made a profit of 59,393 credits for the game. He got a 65,000 mission completion bonus, and he also got a bonus on the XP as well, 3,268, but the total amount came out at 4,085. So two good battles featuring the AMX-13 F3, one where there's total damage done by blind shots, and this one, total damage done by non-stun HE, and it does seem to work. Um, although we have seen that some of the AP shells also work under some cir circumstances, so it might be advisable to carry a couple of rounds of armor piercing, or the heat rounds as they are in the AMX-13 F3, as well as a few rounds of those non-stun HE rounds, and use the stun ones to get the uh, uh, the mastery, and then use the other ones to get the damage. Hope you enjoyed both those replays. If you did, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm, and thank you for watching.